Jesus, I declare the breaking of every yoke, the breaking of every chain, the breaking of every limitation. Great physician, great physician, great physician. Jesus, we ask, oh God, for a visitation tonight. We ask, oh God, for a visitation tonight. We ask, oh God, that you wipe away tears today. You wipe away the tears of reproach today. In the name of Jesus, Father Lord, I declare tonight, everyone that has been called a chronic single, everyone that has been called a chronic barren woman, anyone that has been called a chronic spinster, today I declare that you Tonight, I ask that you mend every broken heart, mend every broken destiny, mend every punctured and ruptured and top punctured life and destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight, I declare that anyone who has been confused, who has been tied down, been changed every victim of spirit husband victim of spirit wife victim of spirit children every marine spirit arrangement that has held anybody down today I command your hold is broken you are in the physical and I decree you shall be established in the physical. That demon that has been fighting your marriage, fighting your destiny, today it is arrested. The legal hold of the captive, today that legal captivity is broken in the name of Jesus. is equally broken in the name of Jesus lift up your hands and let's worship him give him praise father we thank you thank you thank you blessed be your name O Lord adoration to your name O Lord thank you thank you Thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare it done. Many people had encounters. You saw something leaving you, saw something flying out of you. You experienced something. Can I see your hand? Oh, amazing, amazing, amazing. Father, we give you praise. Can, can, let me take one, just one or two. Then we sit down and continue the rest of the service. One or two, something drastic. You had an encounter and you felt something leaving you drastically and you want to share it with us. Just one or two, very quickly. The rest of us, you may be seated. The rest of us, you may be seated. Yes, let's just take, yeah. That's okay, just tell us what you've heard so far. We we'll just stop at just she had come to the service tonight with heavy burden, praying for her family. And while that session was on, she felt a move, something left her body, something and left the her. weight is every here. spirit of depression, every spirit of downcast sadness, every spirit that has held you heavy in your heart. I declare today that hold of the devil is broken in the name of Jesus. I declare your freedom now in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, one more, Auntie. What is it with your baby? Lift up your hands. Just worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Hallelujah. She has just been healed of um, a urinary incontinence. 
she had the urge while the session was on but for the first time she's been able to resist oh. it flowing on its own oh i come against that uti causing that urinary incontinence in the name of jesus christ you are healed you are delivered in jesus name let's celebrate the king of kings and lord of lords she's been able to control the urine if it was before it would have poured even before she got to the toilet and god just healed her let's celebrate the king of kings and the lord of lords in the name of jesus christ please open your bibles with me tonight um very quickly to the book of proverbs we'll look, look at proverbs chapter 31. father we worship you we are so grateful to you for your help I'd like to welcome you to the very first evening of the Destiny Recovery Convention. Celebrate the Lord. Tomorrow we'll be recognizing a lot of people that are here. We have over um, 34 representatives from different countries that are here already. We'll be doing that properly tomorrow and want to celebrate you and welcome every one of you. Any um, married person in the house tonight, can you give Jesus a shout of praise? Any single person that is about to get married, can you give God a shout of praise? I like your excitement and your enthusiasm. All right, the married people in the house, have we learned how to do it? The married people in the house, can you give Jesus a shout of praise? <laughs> you are still being very officious. Praise the Lord. Well, we'd like to welcome every one of you. Very quickly tonight, um, we will be um, having two segments in our teaching. And um, we'll be looking in this segment at rising... The secrets of rising to the top and staying at the top for the married. Rising to the top, staying at the top for the married. Maybe it might be addressing married people, but the information is still very relevant to anybody who is planning to be married. It's vital because... You already know some vital things even before you step into the institution of marriage. And so, Proverbs chapter 31, I'll read verse 10, 11, 12, 13, and then I'll jump uh, all the way to 28 and 29 and 30. Can we read together? Verse 10, who can find a virtuous woman? For her prize is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Oh, sorry. Which verse is? Her husband is known at the gates. Her husband is known at the gates where he sits. He seated among the elders. Her husband is known at the gate where he seated among the elders. 23. Thank you, sir. I wrote 1 3 instead of 2 3. Verse 23. Can we read that also? Her husband is known in the gate when he seated among the elders of the land. Verse 28. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praised her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in the name of Jesus Christ. So very quickly, the bottom line for a successful marital destiny is anchored on three very vital personalities. The bottom line, the very, very basic thing we must come to terms with is the fact that a successful marital destiny is anchored on the role of God the Father. The husband factor and the woman's factor. So we have the God factor. If I were to use 
senior pastor's type of grammatology. I'll say the godical factor and the man's factor and the woman's factor. The God factor means that God is the one that gives dignity and blesses a marital relationship. He is the one that gives color to a successful marriage. Oh yes, you might say, we see one or two people who are not born again and they look like they are doing very well. Oh fine, we don't know the details. But for you to have the kind of marriage that God intended at the time he instituted the marriage institution, then God must be the number one factor in the marriage. That passage we read, the, talk, the, 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 the Bible tells us in, in, in verse 20, 20, um, in verse 20, in verse 30, it says, Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. So the fear of the Lord with the woman is a vital criteria and vital necessity for the success of that woman in the marriage. And the same thing for the man. The same thing applies for the man. I was wondering, why would the Bible say that beauty is vain? Why would it say beauty is vain? And I realized because normally um, the, the normal interpretation of the word vain... But what it says there is that beauty does not last forever. As in, at a point, you, the woman starts to age. Or the woman puts on some weight after childbirth and so on and so forth. It might not be as it was at the very beginning. So that if it were only beauty, if it were only the charmingness that was the criteria for the marriage, then there might be a little bit of a challenge. If you want to be married, sister, only because of how you look, how your, uh, let me spare you the details. You sisters, you know what you talk about. You know, if those are the only criteria that you think are the criteria required to be married, then you might need to redress your life and redress your stand. And so the God factor is the number one factor. Number two is the man's factor. The husband factor. The husband factor. You see, beloved brothers and sisters, the man has one singular assignment. As, ma as far as a successful marriage is concerned, the man has one singular assignment. And that assignment is to love your wife. What is the man's assignment? If you are sitting near a man, help me ask him, what is a man's assignment? If you are a man, please help me answer. What is a man's assignment in marriage? Is to love your wife. Man, your assignment is to love your wife. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 25. Ephesians 5, 25. It says, husbands, love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. That is a very, very tall order. To love your wife as Christ loved the church. That is the fundamental thing. For you to love your wife as Christ loved the church. Very quickly, five points that I will make under that. That constitutes this love that the Bible is making reference to. Number one is... Your love in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, we will not be able to read all of it, but in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, our, the love passage of the Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, uh, in verse 4, let's look at verse 4. Verse 4 says, Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunted not itself. It is not puffed up. Can you read it to us in the... Amplified Bible translation, verse 4 and 5. Amplified. Let's read it together again. Verse 4. It says, Love endureth long and is patient and kind. Love never is envious nor boils over with jealousy. Love is not boastful or vainglorious. Does not display itself haughtily it is not conceited love is that is is not arrogant or inflated with pride 
it is not rude or unmannerly and does not act unbecomingly. Love, that is God's love in us, does not insist on its own rights or its own way. For it is not self-seeking. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in the name of Jesus Christ. So the first thing we'll look at here is the fact that love is not envious. Love is trusting. You trust your wife. You are not envious of your wife. I took that first because where we read in the, in, 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 in the book of Proverbs tells us concerning the husband that the heart of her husband in verse 11 doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. So the husband has absolute confidence in his wife's ability to take care of him. His wife's ability to look towards his interest. His wife's ability to care for what bothers him. And of course, where the foundation of the marriage is pure and there is no premarital sexual relationship, that eliminates the distrust that comes from a defiled bed. I'm sure that you've come across that. We talk about it all the time in this church. That where the bed is defiled, it results in four major consequences. And you can group all the other things into those four consequences. Where the bed is defiled, there's premarital sexual relationship. It gives rise to lack of love. Love dies, either in both parties or in one party. Number two, there's lack of trust. Trust is eroded. Number three, there is lack of mutual respect. Respect dies on the grounds of that. And number four, there are extramarital affairs. The extramarital affairs may be from one party, maybe the man, or from the woman, or both of them are engaging in private practice outside the home. That aside, the trust we're talking about here refers to the trust of having faith and belief. I was told a story one day about a man consistently, anytime his wife gave him food to eat, he would tell her to taste the food first. He didn't believe that she was not going to poison him. I mean, that was a very extreme and very ridiculous situation. But he, was, he, was, he had basis for those kind of um, um, suspicion. Now, beloved brothers and sisters, you must be able to come to the fact or the point as a married man to be able to trust your wife, trust what she has. Well, of course, you know, basically, the average man trusts his wife with what he eats. How many of you know that the man brings the money, but the woman determines what you end up eating? Because indirectly, you ask Madam, and uh, Madam might ask you, what do you want to eat? Then the man will say, what do you have? Am I right? She will only tell you what she has cooked. At the end of the day, she determined what you ate. Sorry, sir. <laughs> but <laughs> a one man was looking at me with one kind of look like, oh, it's true. Praise the Lord. But the ability to trust your wife is a very vital thing in making a successful home and successful marriage. Number two, which we read from the first Corinthian passage that we read is patience. Men Please be patient with your wives. It's so vital that we learn to be patient. We learn to accommodate them. Women can be very, um, uh, what's the word, can be a bit unpredictable sometimes. They can be overcome with emotion sometimes. They can be overweighed with um, the, the, the weight of work. You know that women might not be as physically strong as men. And when you expect a woman to be on the go and on the move, she might seem to be lagging behind. Maybe because of her physical constitution but nonetheless men have been encouraged to be patient with their wives in first Peter chapter 3 we're not going to be able to go through those passages today the Bible tells men to be patient with their wives considering them as the weaker vessels and so that their prayers will not go unanswered so your consideration and your patience with your wife is vital number three be kind to your wife kindness is being 
it, it, you know, you, you know what it means to be kind. You are considerate. You, 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 you put her in consideration for what you do. You reach out to her. You take care of her. To, today, we're not looking at um, 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 Ephesians chapter 5, where the Bible tells the man to take care of his wife as Christ did the church, clothing her, as washing her with water, as with the word, and, 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 and all that stuff. But, sir, it is not fair when as a man, you earn your salary. You branch Nkwabi joints. Eat the Nkwabi. Drink pepper soup. And then come back home to meet your wife and children. Say, what in there, there? Ah, madam, you don't put meat for the soup. The money that you spent for the pepper soup, if that money was given to your wife, it can cook soup enough for a week that will have enough meat for the whole house to eat. Be kind to your wife. We have a Spanish interpretation going on there. Praise God. Be kind to your wife. Take care of her. Do nice things for your wife. I, I read somewhere one day that if you see a man opening, that is, I'm sorry, African man. It's any man. They didn't say African. It was even an Oibo quote. They said, if you see a man opening a car door for a woman, that is either two things. Either the wife is a new wife or the car is a new car. Why don't we make it a consistent practice? <laughs> Why don't we make it a consistent practice? You know how some people call new car, Amaria? Just like they call a new wife, Amaria. They come and say, ah, now I'm yo. That is, hi, I just bought a new car today. I got a new <laughs> asset today. Beloved, be kind to your wife. At every point in time, take care of her. Be nice to her. Help her. Assist her. Praise the Lord. Number four, love does not insist on its own rights. That we read in 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 5. Once in a while, it still goes with kindness, does not behave itself unseemingly, seeketh not her own, and is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. And so, be careful, be conscious, take time to, um, um, uh, uh, what, how do I put it? it we're not saying, we're, um, you have the final decision as the husband, you have the final say. But once in a while, you can have an impute from your wife that could be beneficial to you. Some men are rather quick to take impute from external forces and external factors than from the wife in their home. Ensuring that you are a man who is part and parcel with your wife. A young child called me. I saw the missed call and then I called back, sent a text. I called back in the US and said, oh, I had this challenge over the night. I had this challenge. I had this challenge. Oh, I've called my mother, but I haven't told my father yet. I called my mother immediately because in our family, we agree that we have no secrets amongst ourselves. And I said to him, that's so good. That is such a good principle. And it is very good that you abide by it. That's a family where the father, the mother, the children are in on what they do. Please be a man that carries your family along. And number five, I have five points for the men today. And five points for the married women today. Number five is praise her. Where we read in 1 Corinthians 13, it says that love is not rude or arrogant. That's amplified. Love is not consistent, conceited. It's not arrogant and inflated with pride. It is not rude or unmannerly and does not act unbecomingly. All right? So God's love on the inside of us does not insist on his own right, on his own ways. That's the one we just talked about now. All right? So love is not rude or arrogant. Have you ever seen some men talk to their wives? Especially in public. You, 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 you feel embarrassed for the woman. And I'm wondering how embarrassed does the woman feel? Go from there. Come here. Don't, you don't shout on a woman. You, 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 uh, 
um, um, that's the summary is don't be rude to your wife. We are going to talk to the women. I have like 11 more minutes. We're going to talk to the women. We're going to encourage the women to be polite, to be nice, to, be, to talk well. But at the same time, it's one thing. The woman is being polite and being submissive and almost killing herself. And the man is talking down on her, maltreating her and treating her anyhow it should be. It's a two-way cycle. It's a two-way machine. If one angle is working, the other angle will work. The two parties have to work together to make it work. So, love is not rude. Love is not arrogant. Love it's not, doesn't behave unbecomingly. Where we read in, uh, in our anchor passage, in, in, in Proverbs chapter 31, it tells us about, in verse 23, her husband is known in the gates, where he sits among the elders of the land. Beloved brothers and sisters, I always say to women, see your husband up there. In whatever he does, see him as the best. Pray him as the best. Ensure that you act like he's the best. I remember a couple of years ago, we had a program in Maraba Church. And it was a couple's meeting or something like that. And one of the women, I still don't know who it was till today, sent a text and said, Excuse me, ma, as we are going to have this couple's meeting today, Please make sure you tell the men to come and wash plates in the kitchen and help their wives to cook. And she gave another a long list of things that they are to do. <laughs> so I came to the meeting. I came to the meeting. And uh, in addressing that question, since it was not a personal question she asked, I said to her, I said, for me, I see my husband way up there, higher than a president. I'm serious. I'm just telling what I preach. How many of you were in Maraba Church that time? This is maybe like um, 10 or more years ago. If anybody will remember, I said to them, I see my husband up there. I see him higher than a president. Now, can I imagine as I am? That my husband is president of Nigeria. Then I tell him, excuse me, Mr. President, come to the kitchen and help me wash these plates. No, 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 no. It's just a simple analogy. Let me tell you the rest of what I said to them. I said, but a man, you can be such a good wife. And the man can love you so much that he saw you sweating it out in the kitchen all by yourself. And he comes in to assist you. He did it of his volition. He did it because he wanted to do it. Are you listening to what I'm saying? And then, you can have a man such as my husband that is so in charge. Wait, let me finish talking. Who, since his schedule... It's not going to give him the allocation of time to do that. He gets me somebody to help me do it. Does the equation not balance? If he pays somebody to help me wash my car, does he have to come out in the morning to wash the car for me? I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise God. So what, what, what brought that about? The man in question, the husband of this virtuous woman, is known in the gates. He sits with the elders. He is a man of honor. He is a man of renown. You can't enter the city and claim that you don't know Mr. Virtuous Wife's husband. Are you understanding me? Why? Because of her conduct around his life. And that is what we want to look at now. What would make a woman such a woman that ensures that she is that her husband rises up 
and praises her. Is that, we read that, right? Where we said in verse 28, her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praised her. Now listen to this. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, comma. That means the husband has basis to rise up and call his wife what? Blessed. Let's say it together. The husband has basis to do what? Call his wife blessed. All right? And then he, in addition to calling her blessed, he praises her. He tells her nice things. Good things. Not that he comes and is shouting on her. Today I was in the study in the morning. I was in where I study. Daddy has where he study. So he just came around. Just came. He said, hi, I just came to love you. How do you think I felt? Yeah, I felt really what? Cool. So I just came to love on you. Then he gave me a hug. I just came to love on you. Gave me a hug. I said, oh, thank you. And then he turned and walked out again and went to continue his walk. Some men will come and say, look at you. What did they do here? Stand up, my friend. Beloved, praise your wife. Tell somebody, husband, praise your wife. Tell her something nice. At least once a day. <laughs> one, one day my husband said, oh, I love you. I said, ah, it has been a long time you said it. I said, what? How can you say that? I said, women, if you tell them I love you hundred times in a day, the next time you said it, they say, ah, it has been a long time you said it. You said I love you in the morning when you are going to, to work. Then in the evening when you come, I say, oh, hello, I love you. I say, okay, ah heard it for a long time any woman in agreement with me can you hear i love you enough no hallelujah so let's go to the women what will make a woman so loved so valued the husband is patient with her the children rise up and call her blessed wife's only assignment is submission now you say only yes Every other thing falls into this submission. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22. It says, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Submit yourselves unto your own, own husbands as unto the Lord. Then it now continues one English, plenty, plenty, plenty English. After verse 23 that it talks to the men. But the English is all summarized in the word submission. If we look at 1 Peter chapter 3, the word, uh, we'll look at, uh, that's not um, for today, but it's one of those kind of passages as women that you must have at the back of your hands. But let me just point this out. Even if I stop here today, it will leave a mark. Ephesians 5.22. Show us on the screen. Ephesians 5.22. What, what does it say? Let's read it together. So, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Capital letter L. Did you see that? Wives, submit yourself unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Capital letter L. That is the Lord God. Ah! That is a big one. That's a tall order. Man, I'm not going to go around talking to my husband anyhow or behaving anyhow to him. Because I am conscious of the fact that if I behave anyhow to him, I am indirectly behaving anyhow to the Lord. Did you hear that? It's in our Bible. It's in it together. We're reading it together. Your behavior towards your husband is an indirect behavior towards your God. Ah. So that it is not taken as heresy or it is not taken as, a, as an extreme teaching. Let's just go down to the word and just look at some basic things in the word. But somebody will think about that and take a little time to meditate on it. The way I would not curse at my master, savior, Lord Jesus Christ, the way I would not 
talk back at my master the way I will not be rude to my master. I should put that in my mind and as a consideration in my relationship with my husband. Five points. What does submission entail? In 1 Peter chapter 3, I think we need to read that. It says, be in subjection unto your own husbands. It, had, it used the word subjection for submission. Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. That, go on, it's all right, thank you very much. Subjection, the word subjection refers to secondary to. And you can look at it as, you know, what, what do you call when you have a king in a town and you have the citizens in the town, what do you call them? The subjects. All right? The subjects. So, wife, look at your husband as a king. See yourself as one of his subjects. See yourself as one of his citizens. And then, meaning that you are secondary to. Number two, dependent on. Be dependent on. I've extrapolated this from that first Peter chapter 3 from the Amplified Bible translation. And you might want to read all of it when you get back home. Depend on your husband. Some women are just carrying shoulders. Me, 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 me. Hey, I have my own money. What is it? Uh -uh, what is it? I don't, no, 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 no. no. Be dependent on him. And let him know that you are dependent on him. Let him feel it. A man wants to feel that he is in charge. And it is not wrong. He was created in the image of God who is always in charge. Is God in charge or not? Is God in control or not? The man, your husband, has been made in the image of God. Let him have charge. Let him have control. Let him be in charge of the home. Praise the Lord. Number three, adapt yourself to your husbands. Adapt yourself to your husband. It's not your husband that is to adapt himself to you. Shoba? How do you say it in Igbo? Inogo? Kunjikwa? Apo? Awo? It is the woman that adapts herself to the man. That is why your surname becomes his surname. Where it is, okay, in agreement, it was done before you married. It can have a hyphenated name. But you become technically under the headship of your husband. And so, depend on him. Adapt yourself to him, learn what he wants, and then present to him what he wants. Learn what he wants and present to him what he wants. Give to him the kind of food he wants to eat. Give to him the kind of atmosphere and how setting that he wants. Go with him where he wants you to go with him to. De adapt yourself to him. Number five, respect him. Respect is still a different entity. Respect means you are not rude either. So it's a mutual respect, mutual no rudeness, mutual politeness, mutual no arrogance, mutual no ostentation, mutual, mutual, mutual. Respect him. And number five, just as for the man, praise your husband. The man, we said, should praise his wife. Say nice things to his wife. The wife also, praise your husband. Say nice things to her. We have said the men should not enslave their wives. They shouldn't treat them as a second class citizens and all and all and all. At the same time, when your husband has done something well, praise him. Tell him well done. Ah, tell him you, are, you appreciate. He paid children's school fees. Say thank you. He gave you money for house upkeep. Say thank you. Maybe say, hey, my husband doesn't give me money. He doesn't, give me, doesn't take care of the house. Wait, 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 wait. The one he did, thank him for that one. That might make him do the other ones you are asking him to do. 
There's a starting point. And we're hoping that now that we, the women, are sitting with the men, that as we are doing our part, the men are also doing their part, then God will do what? Bless our homes, bless our relationships, and give us victory. Anybody blessed here tonight? Can we stand up on our feet with a shout of hallelujah? Lift up your voice tonight and let's appreciate the Lord. The senior pastor will be giving an altar call when he comes up. And um, I believe God that he will also be praying for homes, praying for singles. Praying for homes, praying for singles, praying for every one of us. Lift up your hands and let's worship the Lord. Appreciate him for what you've heard. For many of us, these things are not new information. But still ask God, Father, help me to live with the understanding and the revelations of the things that I have heard and received. I'm sure next session we'll talk about other things pertaining to money and all that and all that. But I believe that the Lord will help us. Lift up your hands and your voice and let's worship the Lord.